Okay, I'm gonna call this video looking at an old friend and Borodino designed by John Young in 1972 is like an old friend. It was one of my favorite games of the period and I remember in 1972 we played the played this thing to death. We actually wore out some of the counters. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the game, the board, the counters and um, it's just a great game. Now it was a magazine game. It came in issue number 43 and it was later issued in a box version. And over the years, as uh, war games progressed and stuff, I eventually got rid of my copy, always regretting it. And when I had a chance to rebuy it again, a nice new copy, um, I did so. And this is the one we're looking at now. Now, the rules booklets for the uh, simple games of that period were uh, not even a booklet. They were kind of this folder. So you got what? Here's your rules there easy to learn. Now it was based on the Napoleon at Waterloo uh, system which was designed uh, the year before. So it was an introductory game Napoleon at Waterloo. Very simple having the standard rigid zones of control and basic hex grid principles which a lot of games uh, followed. Now they expanded the series and eventually made four more battles, I think uh, Leipzig and Wagram and Jena Auerstadt. But my favorite was Bordino and it still is today. Now playing this uh, simple Bordino game uh, got me into you know, trying more advanced versions like La Bataille de la Moscova. This is the 200th anniversary edition. Um, We'd have to do a whole video on that. This one I call it's, it's fanatic level. It's a wonderful simulation. I don't know about as a game. But anyway, let's take a look at Borodino here, designed in 1972. Now, what we've got here is the setup, as if you're playing the three-day battle. Now, one thing I liked about this game was all the playing aids were in one place. So your opponent that sat on this side, the Russian had his own combat results table. The French had his combat results table. Here was the turn record where units came on. You had your uh, turn effects chart there. And at the top, you can see the three different setups for the full three-day scenario, second-day scenario, and third-day scenario. Now I'll be setting up the grand campaign as if we were playing the whole battle. We'll move a few counters, take a look at the, uh, the board closer, and um, get a few comments in there. Okay, let's take a little tour of the battlefield here. Here you have the Kolochka screen, uh, stream, and there's the town of Borodino. Deployed is the Russian army, and the French army will come here from the west. These hexes marked A and B. Over here, the advanced position is the Shevardino Redoubt, where the battle was fought on uh, September 5th, I think it was. Over here, you've got the Bagarachin Fleshes, and here you have the Great Redoubt. And over to the right, where the majority of the Russian army is deployed. Kutuzov had his headquarters here at Gorky. So that's the positions as they existed on September 5th. Okay, and this is the turn record track showing you the arrival of the Grand Army. As you can see, the Grand Army is going to arrive piecemeal. Now each turn represents about one hour. So you can see that on September 5th, most of the day the French Army was still ar arriving. And you've got nightfall. Even on September 6th, the Grand Army had not totally concentrated. And, of course, the main battle was fought on September the 7th. Now, to tell you the truth, I don't remember if back in 72 we tended to play the Grand Battle or just the third day. I seem to recall us always playing the Grand Battle because it's a simple game and we wanted to see, um, well, explore all the nuances of it. I seem to recall that there was a bit of a problem, though, on September 6th 
because we tended to have the grand battle on the 6th. We were quite anxious to get fighting and playing. And uh, historically, September 6th was a day of just reorganizing and uh, deploying the troops. They actually, there was no major fighting on the 6th. So in the game that I'm going to just fool around with a bit here, uh, we're going to begin on September 5th with the Russians coming, I mean the French coming in here on hexes A and B and attacking the uh, Shevardino Redoubt. Now there are some rules to simulate the inactivity of the Russian army on September 5th. Most of the units behind the Kolochka here are frozen and I'll check the rules but I think you're allowed to free up one unit per turn so the Russian right will gradually be freed of freed from for movement. Now the combat results table for these games was very simple. It re really was based on the ability of the attacker to attack, uh, drive the defender away, advance after combat, surround the defender with zones of control and destroy him. Because you can see that even at odds of one to one there's almost no, well there are no DRs or DEs rather, and AEs. It was a push back and defend scenario and only at high odds did you finally begin to get DE results but also exchanges were in there and only at odds of like 6 to 1 were you guaranteed of getting a DE result. So this was very much a push and pull system. It in no way reflects Napoleonic combat and we would be fooling ourselves if we thought uh, it, it was. It just it, it is not. It is not a Napoleonic combat simulator. But having said that, the quad series, which I'll call them because there was others in the series, they were all capable of producing historical results and they were just plain fun games. So um, to say that these are Napoleonic um, simulators would be totally uh, incorrect. They were just simple, fun games that had a Napoleonic feel to them. Now, in the game, uh, the redoubts are going to be very key, of course, because the Russians are doubled in them. And if the French occupy the uh, redoubts for one turn, they are destroyed. So the battle does center around the redoubts. You can see the Russian right flank is well protected by the Kolochka. Katuza was hoping the French would attack from that direction. They did not. They actually came from this direction, which is why the Shevardino Redoubt was built. So we're going to follow a few turns and just show you how simple the game was. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, we're going to begin the game. And I'll be photographing this from the French point of view since their units come on the board here at A and B. So what I'll do is I'll move the pieces and catch the video after I've moved each piece. So the game begins September 5th, the 12 noon turn, with the French coming on the board. Okay, I'm going to be a bit rusty with this game. So I've deployed the French there on the hexes that they come in on. I'll move them and uh, we'll follow the action from there. Okay, that's the situation after the French have moved up. This is all French cavalry, and uh, this division has moved into the town of Duramino there to get the doubling, and the Russians will now move. Now, the Russians are under a movement restriction. They can't move any of the units north of the Great Redoubt till 1500, and even then, they can only free up one new unit per turn. So the Russians are going to move this group here. I'll take a look at the situation, and... Uh, do the Russian move. Okay, the Russians have moved up. They've moved up this core from the Fleshes up to the Shevardino Redoubt area. And the 7th Corps artillery here can take a pot shot at this cavalry unit in the town. That's one to two, so they could roll a one and cause it to be driven back. Roll, and they get a two which is merely an AR result, which they can ignore. But they choose to stay there. So we're on to the 1300 turn, and the French will move. Okay, the French are going to try to be aggressive here. The best defense is a good offense, so they're going to try to push these units forward. 
and we'll see what they can do. So they're doing merely a one-to-one -one here and a two-to-one here, mainly positional and to tie some Russian units down. I've already looked at the counterattack won't be that bad, but let's see what the French can do here on this one-to-one -one attack. They roll five, and that's an AR. Now, according to the rules, the victorious player gets to decide where they retreat. So the Russian wants these guys to go back, not get in his rear. And this unit will have to be displaced because you can't retreat into a woods. So we'll displace them this way. Okay, we now have a two to one attack over here on the French left. Two to one with a one results in a DR. There's only one place this unit can go, which is there. The French will decide to take the square, thus pinning this unit. This is the situation after two hours. Okay, the Russians have decided to counterattack here. And like I said, I may be rusty, and I may be taking some chances on this table, because some of those exchanges can be pretty rough. So, we'll do this three to one attack here on the uh, French right. Three to one. They get a six. Uh-oh, that's really bad. That's an exchange, which means the two is destroyed. Put on the destroyed French unit, and this six is destroyed. So, that was very bad for the Russians. Shows you how rusty I am in these. And they're going to do this one-to-one -one attack for the town of Garamino. One-to-one. -one. This time they get it. It's a DR. Drive the French cavalry out of the town, and the Russian division will advance. Town, you're doubled, so that's going to be handy. Now we've got the five and the two, seven. A three-to-one again on a two. We do not want the exchange result here. Three to one. We get a five, which is a DR. So we'll drive this two dash five back, and the five dash four advances. Russians are counterattacking here. Two to two, one to one. One to one with a five is an AR. And he gets repulsed here. Now the rules do say that the victorious player can advance, or even uh, a defender can take the hex. I don't think the two wants to go into that uh, nightmare. Anyway, we've got a five to one attack here. Always leery of exchanges. Five to one, which is a three, and that's a DE. So we have a French unit eliminated there. And the Russians will advance. So that's the situation after two hours after the... Russians have moved. They've pinned some key French units here, and uh, French are in a little bit of a fix. Let's see what they can do as new units come on for the 1400 turn. Okay, this is the situation. 1400 after the French have moved. Now, a lot of their units were pinned, and they're not in a very enviable situation. They're committed to a lot of low odds attacks. But that's the nature of the beast. So we'll have these two, that's six attacking the four double to eight. So that's a one to two attack. Do that first. One to two. With the two is an AR. No surprise there. We'll have them go back here. The Russians will not advance. We've got four attacking five. It's another one to two attack. One to two. With a four. No surprise, that's an AR-2. So the French cavalry here is getting bloodied by the Russian infantry. And we have another 1-2 to two against that 5. 1-2. to Uh-oh. 1-2 to two is 6. Yuck. That's an AE. So we've got four dead Frenchmen here. Really shows that I'm rusty with this system. Probably shouldn't have blundered in that fast. Let's see what the Russians can do now. Okay, this is the situation after the Russians have moved. And a lot of this is coming back to me now. Um, the French are in a real bad way here on September 5th, as the Russians are being very aggressive 
and uh, let's see how these battles go. Okay, the four will attack this four. It's a straight one to one. One to one. With five is AR. The Russians get pushed back to Duramino. Okay, this two will bombard that two, soaking off. One to one. They get a two, which is DR. I think he'll push the French back here. And we've got a five attacking two. Two to one. Two to one. The three driving the French cavalry still further back. And I think I will have the Russian infantry advance still. Yeah, maybe not. No, better not. Okay, um, five and four, nine, nine to two. We have a four to one against that cavalry. Could be destroyed here. Four to one with a two. Yep, destroyed. French are in a very bad way. And, uh, yeah, we'll advance here. So there's the French casualties right now. Two, four, six, eight, nine. And the Russians have got six. So it's a pretty bloody fight already. So that's the end of the um, 1400 turn. Okay, this is the beginning of the 1500 turn. Some heavy French stuff comes in now, some divisions and some heavy artillery. Let's see if they can push the Russians back. Now, 1500 is also the turn that the Russians can start to release one unit from their right flank. So the situation is just going to get rougher and rougher, I suspect. Let's see what the French can do. Okay, there's some good French attacks going in here and a couple of uh, not-so-good. but They want to push those Russians back, trying to gang up on this five here. Let's begin the attacks right to left. Two to one here. Two to one. That's a DR. Drive the Russians back. Occupy. This is a soak off attack. One to two for the town of Duramino. One to two. Three. No surprise there. AR. Russians will push them back to here. Now we'll do this main attack here. The seven is going to be soaking off to that two. Let's do the main attack first. 14, 19 to five. Three to one against a large unit though. A one would be nice for the French. Three to one with a five. And that's a DR, which, you know, not the best, but throws them back. The French will occupy with the seven. Seven bombards two, three to one. A one or six would be good here for the French. They get it. So that's an exchange result, which destroys that Russian cavalry unit. No advance possible, because that's a long-range bombardment. We now have a soak-off attack, 2-2, two 1-1. To two, one to one. That's a victory, defend a retreat. Not sure if we should advance here or not. I think I better be well enough alone. And 5-5, five five, another 1-1. One one to one, and that's also a victory. Push the Russians back to there, no to there. And don't think the French will advance. So, let's see what the Russians can do. And the Russians are allowed to free up one unit from the right flank. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'll flip all those units upside down so I'll know which ones are still frozen. And as I move each unit, I'll put it face up. So let's see what the Russians can do. Okay, this is after the Russians have moved, but before their combat. I've moved up some artillery here from the right flank. Moscow militia is still moving down here. We have an unfortunate soak off there. Russian line stabilize itself, and they'll be able to bombard this seven. So let's get this one to two battle out of the way first. One to two, which is AR, nothing. Unexpected there. Don't think the French will advance. And we've got 7, 12, 12 to 7, so 1 to 1. 1 to 1. With 3, which does drive the French back. Now, should I occupy there? Mm, 14, 19, built in 3 to 1. Um, I don't think I'll occupy. So we're going to be going to the 1600 turn, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, some new French units come on again. 
Okay, some real French powers coming out of the board now. Two more divisions of infantry, another division of cavalry. Let's see if we can crack this Chevardin or Doubt uh, front. Okay, <clears throat> got some good attacks going in this turn and some really bad ones. Again, it shows how rusty I am playing these old classic games. Anyway, okay, we've got a 6 to 1 here, which automatically destroys that Russian. And the French unit will advance. We've got some iffy attacks here and some good ones. We've got nine factors here going against Duramino. That's a one to one. If the French won this, it could start to crack the position. Let's see, one to one. It does not crack the position. AR. Okay, the um, artillery can take a voluntary AR whenever it wants, so it will go to here. Yeah, maybe here. And then he'll go back here. I don't think the Russians want to advance into that mess. Now I've got a dicey attack here. It's a good odds attack, but it risks a unit. It's a 3 to 1 attack against Naratori. An exchange here would be awful. 3 to 1. 3 to 1. With 5. Causes a DR. He'll go into the Chevardin or Doubt. The 7 will advance. It's risky, but he's got to pin these units. Now we've got another one-to-one -one against that Russian division, but it is surrounded. That's the key to these old-fashioned games, surrounding units and cutting them off. If this attack wins, we might be able to crack this position. One-to-one. -one. It does win. DR, this unit is destroyed. Catching up the casualties now. Six goes in and occupies. We've got a seven-to-seven. Seven. One-to-one again. That is a repulse. French retreat there. I don't think the Russians want to enter that mess. Seven to five is one to one. One to one, they lose that one too. Back they go. So, Russians are getting hammered now. They still have a um, pretty good defense, but they've got to counterattack these French units and uh, as with any of these old simple games, a die roll could be everything. Let's see what the Russians can do. And they will be able to free up another unit from the right flank. Okay, we've got a pretty dicey situation here. This is because most of those Russian units were tied down in zones of control. They had very few units to move and protect their flanks. So, with the die rolls are going to really determine this whole front. The French are crashing through here, and uh, this could be critical. Well, this 7 has to fight that 6, so 1 to 1. It's a win. Okay, so this will have to displace him, and he'll go back. I don't think the... Well, if they occupy and kill this 7, sure would be nice. But uh, they don't have to occupy, do they? Guys surrounded anyway. All right, so we've got seven plus four eleven. We have a critical one to one here against the French division. If this wins, we crack the French position again. One to one. Ar not this time. Now, the rules say that the French get to retreat the Russians, so there's no decision here. This guy must go here. Here he can go here. Here we'll make it. Worse for the Russians, he would pick that, he would pick that. Now the rules say that the uh, French player can occupy the vacated position. So it's a chance he could go right into the redoubt and negate the redoubt. But he's probably going to get slammed in a one-to-one -one and surrounded. But he could be surrounded anyway. So I'm saying, what the heck, the French are going into the Chevardino redoubt. That's the situation at the end of the 1600 turn. The next couple of turns probably will be pretty critical. Okay, this is the situation at 1700 before the French have moved. Now they're going to try to be aggressive, hold on to the Chevardina Redoubt, and move up their forces as quickly as they can. I think the next, well we only have three, three daylight turns, so it's, these turns are going to be rather critical.
Okay, this is the 1700 turn. The French have just moved. Now they made a breakthrough here. <clears throat> These attacks would be pretty good. They just got some several Russian units surrounded. This could be disastrous for the Russians, depending on how the die goes. So let's do these battles right to left and see what happens. So we've got 7 to 4, 1 to 1, the unit is surrounded. Hmm. Could make that higher with that 7. Uh, 14 to 4, 3 to 1. Yeah, I better make it guaranteed. It's not blocking. No, you can shoot over a town. So 7, 14 to 4 is 3 to 1 here. 3 to 1. 3 to 1 with a 3. It's DR. That unit is destroyed. Okay. The French will advance. Okay. Now we're going to do 6 to 5. 1 to 1 here. 1 to 1. With a 1. That's a DR. He's pushed back here. Hmm. He'll occupy here. Actually, I'll make it him. Now we've got a risky attack here. 7 to 2, 3 to 1. Pardon me, it's a 1 to 1. He's in a town. 1 to 1. That one is repulsed, which means he goes back here. Well, the Russians are in a bad way anyway. They want to get that redoubt back. They're going to actually go in. Now, we've used that 7, so we're going to have 13, 19, 24 to 7, a 3 to 1. And this unit is surrounded. So that's a seven. Three to one. With a five is a DR. That unit is destroyed. So the Russians are in a very bad way right now. Very bad. Six will advance. We've got seven to two, another three to one. Three to one with a six. That's an exchange. So these two units will be destroyed. Okay, now it's the Russians' turn for 1700, and it looks very, very bad on the Shevardino front. What can the Russians do? They get to free another unit, by the way. Okay, this is the situation after the Russians have moved before their combat. They're doing some desperation moves right now because they have to. The Moscow militia came in to buy precious time by doing one to twos and maybe getting a miracle. Who knows? These guys were already pinned, and those are the units I've freed up over here. So, the Russians are in a real bad way, and uh, still got two turns of daylight, so September 5th could see a very decisive French victory. Let's see the results of these battles. 3-2, three to, three to 1-1. to one. AR, push them there. 3-4 to four is a 1-2. Two, but we should do this five to two, two to one first, because he's surrounded. Two to one with a three. That retreats. That does destroy the unit. The Russians will not occupy. Now we'll do this one to two. One to two with a two is an AR, push him out of the way. Now this two uh, with the four, you get to use the two redoubt. Four to Seven is a one to two. One to two with a four. Say R. And he can just retreat there. And five, to, no, five to eleven is one to three. This guy's toast. One to three with a six. Yes, he is. Now I'm just going to look at the Russian dead here. Come up with a factor count. The Russians have. 9, 13, 18, 24, 26, 27, 27, 32 destroyed. The uh, French have 3, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 13. So the Russians are taking like three times the casualties. Not good at all. We're doing the 1800 turn. That's the second last turn before day, uh, nightfall. So the French have two turns to exploit this victory. Doesn't look good for the Russians at all. Okay, a Severdina Redoubt is getting to look like the Alamo here. Russians are in a very bad way. 
Okay, six, uh, 11, 18, you got a six to one, that's an automatic destruction here. French will advance. They have to attack the Chevrodina Redoubt, so we'll throw a nine, nine, to, no, let's make it a kill. Yeah, nine, yeah, 15 to two, seven to one, just make it automatic, six to one, the, the Redoubt is taken. Now we'll do a seven to two. No, nope, pardon me, it's a seven to one. Keep forgetting about the town. One to one. They do not take it. French go back. And we do another one to one there. Defend a retreat. Okay. Still looking very bad for the Russians. What can they do? Okay, there's not much the Russians can do. Their, a lot of them units are pinned. Just moved in the Moscow militia to try and close this gap. A division came up here to close that gap. Russians are in a real mess. Okay, we'll begin with a one-to-one -one against that French division. They get a victory. It actually destroys that division, which is a bonus. They will not advance. And uh, two to 12 is one to six. Um, if you go worse than one to five, it's treated as one to five. So they're automatically destroyed. That unit is gone. And the French get a free advance. Okay, so we're doing the last daylight turn. More French come on, and we'll do a summary of the battle there. Okay, we've got a French horde coming on here. Let's catch the action after they've moved. Okay, this is just going to be horrible to contemplate. We've got a 12 to 3, 4 to 1 there. 4 to 1 with a 6. Well, the Moscow militia goes down fighting. They're destroyed. They take down a French division with them. And uh, we'll throw these 3 at that 5. Okay, so 19 to 5. A 3 to 1 on that 5. 3 to 1 with a 1. Oh my god. Russians are destroyed. 7-4 goes in. We have this bombardment attack 1 to 1 which is AR, which they can ignore. So that's the French attacks. Mm -hmm. Well, we can almost call the battle here. Certainly on September 5th we can. Uh, let's finish the Russian turn and uh, we'll do a summation here. Okay, I've reoriented the camera here to give you the north-south um, position of the battlefield and how the game went. So in summary, I didn't bother to finish the Russian turn. There really wasn't much point. Now you can see that the French have bust, busted through the Russian left totally. The units upside down here are the units that are still frozen. So during the night, uh, September 5th here, the, uh, the Russian will be able to free up some more units on the right. But for all intents and purposes, the French have won the Battle of Bordino on September 5th. They have about half the losses that the Russians do and the Russians are completely out of position. So that's due to my being overly aggressive with the Russians. I had forgotten that uh, on September 5th, as in history, the Russians took a defensive position, and that's what I should have done in this game. So I kind of blew the game as the Russians. So uh, don't uh, judge the game just because of my poor showing in this one battle. But in summary, so what do I think of Borodino? I think it's still one fine game. I mean, for what, designed in 1972. Here we are, Christmas Eve 2018. I mean, holy cow, this thing is like 47 years old. And, you know, as a introductory game, it's still fine, in my opinion. I wish they had done some other battles using this exact same scale. Um, I'd love to see Alao for example, on this. Uh, I know that there was an ILAO game in um, SPI, but it did modify the basic system. So in summary, I think if you want a good introductory game, this one is quite good. Uh, there's still copies around. I was managed to get a very good copy. It was punched, but I could tell the fellow had virtually uh, not played it because the rules were in excellent condition. So... Um, that's my summary of Borodino, 1972, designed by John Hill. And uh, 
one very fine game. Thank you for watching.